Today for Mouse Trap Monday, we're gonna catch, cook, and eat one of the largest and most destructive rodents around. It's a giant water rat, a non-native invasive species from South America known as the Nutria. Delicious. If you've never seen a Nutria before, think of an animal that looks like a giant rat with webbed feet. They live around water. You see them swimming in ponds, channels, wetlands. They come on the banks to feed on vegetation. They're herbivores, so they only eat plants. And that's one of the problems with them. They destroy native wetland vegetation. They're constantly defecating in the water, adding bacteria, lowering the water quality. And the biggest problem with Nutria is they dig in the banks of levees and dikes. That can lead to levees failing, resulting in huge flooding. So basically, Nutria can be a huge problem. But if they're not native, how'd they get here? Well, the answer can be found in this magazine, Outdoor Life, from 1958. If you turn to the back, you see an advertisement. It says, for extra profitable fur farming, raise Nutria. Sensational newcomer to fine fur market. Up to $600 a month with only four small pens. You can still get in on the ground floor of Nutria Ranching, new rapidly growing field of fine fur farming. Well, the problem is people saw that advertisement and thought it was a great way to make money. So they bought and raised Nutria, but eventually the market fell out and they were left with a bunch of Nutria. So they turned them loose. And ever since they've been in our wetlands, they become established, they're a huge problem. Well, one plus is they're easy to catch. All you need is their favorite food, apples. I'm gonna go collect a box full of apples from the tree. Then we'll have all the bait we need to catch the Nutria. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is set up the trail cameras with a bunch of apples. Not trying to catch them, just to get a feel of where they're feeding and how many Nutria we have. Once they find them, the Nutria will keep coming back for more apples. Then we'll set the traps. Now there are several other species in the wetland that I don't want to kill in a trap, like beaver, otter, raccoon, muskrat, and bobcat. So I'm not gonna use a kill trap, but instead, I'm gonna use my favorite live catch trap. Let me show you what that is. To catch the Nutria, we're gonna use a have a heart cage trap. It's a wire cage with a door that opens in the front. There's a hook that holds it open and a pedal. When the animal walks in to get the bait, it steps on the pedal. The door closes and you got it in the cage. If you accidentally catch a cat, a pet, or a wild animal you don't wanna kill, it's perfect. Just lift up the door and let him go. To bait it, I'm gonna fill the back of the trap with apples. Then hook in the pedal. I'm gonna put a few in front of there to bring them in and a bunch at the entrance. When the Nutria wants the apples, it will go in the back of the trap and you got it. Now I just need to set up the motion camera so we can see the trap in action. I have my trail camera mounted on a stick. We'll push it in the mud. Turn it on. We're all ready to go. I'll come back and check it in a few hours. Nutria will feed all day long. It's been about six hours since we set the trap and I thought I'd check it before dark. I'm gonna set up the tripod. Can you see that dark spot on the bank? I'll zoom in. We caught a big Nutria. It wanted the apples, went in the trap, stepped on the lever, the door closed, and we got it. Hopefully the trail cameras worked. We'll take a look at the footage, then go check out the Nutria. From what I found, Nutria are extremely easy to catch in these cage traps. They're pretty aggressive, so you don't want to stick your fingers anywhere near the cage. They have sharp teeth, and they could bite your finger off. Now this is a non-native invasive species, so I can't let it go. I'm going to humanely dispatch it, but I don't want the meat to go to waste. Normally I feed the rodents I catch to wild animals, but with this guy, I'm not going to do that. 
I've never tasted Nutria meat before, so we're gonna give it a try. Given YouTube strict standards, I won't show the butcher process in this video, but I will show you how to cook the meat. So our Nutria looks a little different than last time you saw it. This is the hind saddle, the best cut of meat. You can see the tail, but otherwise, it's a pretty white meat, almost like rabbit, or kind of looks like chicken. I'm gonna place it in a Pyrex. It barely fits in there. Add some olive oil. It's quite a bit of meat, that's a big meal. Then I got some Lowry seasoning and some onions and garlic. That doesn't look like a big swamp rat, it looks like a good meal. Now I'm gonna start by placing the meat in the hot oven for 10 minutes. It's been about 15 minutes, but it's nice and brown. We'll take it out of the oven. It's starting to smell really good. Now we're gonna braise it in some water. We'll wrap it in foil and put it back in the oven for 45 minutes to an hour. I cooked up some jasmine rice to go with our nutria. We're also gonna get some vegetables from the garden, some summer squash. My two-year-old daughter Clementine loves helping me find zucchini and yellow squash. There's a squash. Where's the squash? Right there. Should we eat that for dinner? Yes, we can. Can we get it out for us? Yeah, we'll cut it out. Okay. Will we eat that with our nutria? Yes. Yummy! Okay, watch out. This is hot. We'll take it out. So our nutria has been in the oven for about 45 minutes. It looks like it's cooked really well. We'll take off the foil. Oh man, it smells so good. Now with wild game like this, you never want to cook it rare or medium rare. You want it falling off the bone all the way cooked. And that's what we have. It'd be really hard to tell that's a giant swamp rat and not a chicken leg. It's fully cooked, but I'm gonna put it on the Traeger barbecue just to finish it. And I'm gonna cook it along with our summer squash from our garden. The squash gets the same treatment as the Nutria, some olive oil and some seasoning salt. This meal smells so good. We'll start with a little rice, then add some garden squash. And take a look at this Nutria meat. It's tender and moist and just falls off the bone. The legs are pretty dark. The muscle groups have different color and I'm sure different flavor. And it's actually pretty fatty. Okay, I'm ready to taste the Nutria. I've never had Nutria before. Mm. It's moist, it's good, it's not gaming. I bet if people had to guess, they'd call it pork. The lighter stuff may be chicken. This is seriously some of the best wild game I've tasted. They may be destructive in the wetlands, but they sure are tasty. I'm gonna go feed this to my family. More Nutria, please. More Nutria, please. Here you go. Thank you. How does your Nutria taste? Good. Good? Kind of tastes like chicken? Mm -hmm. High five. <laughs> High five again. Well, I bet all the viewers now want to come over for dinner. That was a big hit. My daughter loved the meat. I think I'll cook that meal again and just not tell people what they're eating. Now, one of the best ways to catch Nutria is with the Have a Heart traps. When I was young, I asked for that trap for my birthday. I'd catch opossums, cats, raccoons, and even skunks. So I've been trapping animals for over 30 years and that's one of the best. Okay, question and answer time. The first question comes from Sans the Skeleton. I think he's asking, what is your favorite hobby or thing to do? 
Well, most of my time is spent with my family, but I also really enjoy archery, making my own bows and arrows, flint napping, primitive survival skills, cooking wild game, and hunting. And now for the random food question, tacos or burritos? I love burritos, especially with the meat that's a little different. I enjoyed the Nutria meat, and when I order a burrito, it's either a cabeza burrito, a tripe burrito, or a lingua burrito, that's tongue. And what additions? I like sour cream, I like things spicy, but I can't stand, will not eat cilantro. Disgusting. I'm one of those people that thinks it tastes like soap, so no cilantro. Next question, what is your thoughts on video games? Do you let your kids play them? I do not like video games. I don't play them and I don't let my kids play them. I'd rather they go outside and play in the grass and the dirt. I think video games are a waste of time personally. I know a lot of people like them, but think of all the time you could have if you didn't play with video games. And the final question is, if you could make one insect or pest extinct, what would it be? Well, that's a good question. I don't want mice to go extinct because then I wouldn't have a channel. I hate mosquitoes, so I don't like mosquitoes. Also ticks, this has been a really bad tick year. But my ultimate most hated pest is a plant, poison oak. I'm always breaking out in a rash. The spots on my face, those are poison oak. I constantly have it. I've had it for the last four months in one place or another. So I don't like the blood sucking insects, but my least favorite pest of all time, poison oak. Thanks for all the great questions. Keep sending them, especially the random food questions. Those are fun. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right here. I've posted over 550 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday and Friday. So if you wanna see how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, and nutria, stay tuned.